David, you've shared with us, uh, as you did in your book, Practicing Discernment with Youth, the four stages of a discernment exercise or process, listening, understanding, remembering and dreaming, and acting. And I imagine that youth ministers listening to us today or have read your book really want to know, what does he really mean by each of these elements of the exercise? What would it look like? And, and what's the most important thing for me to take away if I was going to go try to implement this recommendation? So uh, let's take them apart. Let's start with listening. What do you mean by listening? Give us an example of what that part of the exercise might look like. And if I were going to go off to my youth group tonight, what's the most important thing I really ought to keep in mind about this stage of your exercise? When we have engaged young people in the activity of listening, we, um, th there are many ways to, to do this, and I'm going to suggest a few. Uh, but the idea is to find, to find some theme or situation that moves you past apathy. What makes you angry, frustrated, sad, uh, disconnected? And, and so what, you know, what are those themes? Where are those places in the context of your life that, uh, that move you in those ways? And so that might be among, uh, as, as I said in my lecture, it could be at school, it could be among peers, it could be home, uh, it could be uh, in relation, uh, their commercial, you know, cultural life. Uh, it could be any of these different spheres of life. Uh, and so what are, what, are those, what are those places in these different spheres that move you past apathy, and how would you name the situation itself? Um, so there are lots of ways of getting at that, and uh, one of the ways that, that I talked about in the lecture was we simply divided our young people up into teams, and we asked them to go out each week into their school lives or home lives and and see what they saw. And so we asked them, of course, look, look for where you see people pushing past apathy. And so they would, go, they would come back each week uh, to the youth group, and they would have stories to tell. And they would say, let me tell you about my friend uh, Robert, who is having this fight with his parents. And this is what they're fighting about. He wants to go major in this in college. His parents want him to major in this. And this is what they're fighting about. And, and so we would hear over the, over the weeks of our work together, we would hear many different stories and we, uh, until we began to discern kind of a recurring theme, uh, something that was uh, similar stories over and over again. So simple, simply storytelling is ob observing and telling stories is one approach. But we've, we've done listening in many different ways. We've used art. Uh, drama, uh, prayer. I mean, you, those of you uh, who, those people who uh, are familiar with contemplative practices know that, uh, that silence and prayer are important ways of listening to where the Spirit is speaking to you. And I'm thinking, for example, of body prayer where people listen to their, how their body is speaking and they, they might, for example, recognize that they have some shoulder pain and then they remember that they have shoulder pain because of the stress of the week. And then they might remember the stress of the week be it was because they had exams this week. And then, you know, so, so they began to begin to get a sense of how they, their bodies are situated within context that are causing them stress or pain. So, so prayer, uh, theater games. I, we do a lot of uh, theater games in, in our, we did a lot of theater games in our program where we ask young people to, uh, to begin in silence and remember uh, the day, starting from the time you woke up. You know, what was your day like? What did you feel as you were brushing your teeth, as you were eating breakfast, as you were getting in your carpool? to go to school as you were in first period. So we walked him through the day. And this is, uh, this is a sort of Lectio Divina, in a sense. Instead of uh, reading a biblical text, reading our lives. And so, uh, and so asking them to walk through their day and remember their feelings uh, is one way 
that young people begin to identify uh, their feelings. And then we would ask them to create a vignette, create a, uh, a story <coughs> in which uh, they could act out the situation in which they felt anger or frustration or sadness. Uh, timed writing, you know, we, we ask young people um, sometimes take a pencil and piece of paper and when I tell you to start writing, start writing and don't take your pencil up from the paper until I call time. And then we would give them a prompt, I feel frustrated when, and then they just keep writing or I feel angry when, you know, or we might ask something like the overall uh, sense of emotion that I have in my life right now is. Uh, so it's just a way to prompt their memory, prompt, uh, you know, their experiences so that they can begin to name them in order for us to analyze them. So uh, lots of, uh, I, I suspect there are lots of creative folks who are doing things that I haven't imagined, but we've we found many different ways using art and drama and prayer uh, to kind of get at these themes.